What's up team? In this video, I'm going to share how I assembled and installed a cylinder number four cooling system mod on my EJ257. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this modification, I'll give you a brief summary. On the EJ series engines in America, there is a coolant passage that is plugged. It's located on the rearward section of the left head by cylinder number four. I say in American EJs because there is an OEM Subaru part that makes the port instead of a plug. So there's that. Anyway, because this port is plugged, the coolant temperature around cylinder number four becomes significantly higher during operation. And if you watch my power support video, you know that if you increase your power, you will increase the amount of heat generated by the engine. So the goal of this modification is to lower the temperature of the coolant around cylinder number four, which will inherently lower the average temperature of the engine coolant. So the first thing I had to do was source the parts for this modification. There are several companies that make kits for this, but they are in very high demand. So when I was looking for them, they were sold out. Now the companies are making more kits, but I wanted to get this done before my track day. So the parts that's needed for this is a 5 8 inch heater hose, 5 8 inch metal T, appropriate hose clamps, and an M20 port fitting. The tools I used was an H12 male hex socket, a ratchet wrench, a hose cutter, a screwdriver, and box wrenches for the fittings. For my specific setup, I use AN style fittings for the port and I use a 45 degree press fitting. So if you decide to use AN style fittings, you should definitely use an AN style wrench. Okay, so for the install, you only wanna do this when the car is cold. Not hot, not warm, but cold. Hot coolant can be very harmful and in some cases fatal. So now that we have that established, you wanna lift the car if you have to and drain the coolant. There should be a drain bolt or a petcock on the passenger side of the radiator at the bottom. You can also take out the loader radiator hose if you don't wanna do it that way. Once the coolant is drained, you are going to remove the plug that's inside the head. Now they use a good amount of sealant, so you may need to use a breaker bar with an extension to get it loose. Once the plug is out, clean out all the sealant that's left in the threads. I use the pick, you can use a small screwdriver or something else like a little brush or something. You definitely don't want to leave the old sealant inside of the threads or your coolant system. From there, you want to apply fresh sealant onto the threads of the port fitting if you feel the need. Hand tighten the port fitting until you can't anymore, then you want to snug it with a wrench. Now this part was easy for me because of the tube style subframe that I have, but you may have to use a crow's foot or a deep socket if you have an OEM subframe. From this point, you want to get a rough estimate of how long you want your new hose to be. The hose will connect to the head port and to the heater core hose. The hose you want to use is a hose that comes directly from the water pump, which is the leftmost hose. What I did, I installed the T-fitting to existing lines first. This ensured that the original hose position wasn't affected by the modification. Once the T was installed, I measured and I cut the length going from the port to the T and secured all the hoses with the clamps. Make sure everything is tight and there are no obstructions or potential hazards. So this means your steering rack shaft and or any other cables or wires near that area. After that, you're just gonna refill and burp your coolant system and take it for a test drive or two. If there are no issues, the upgrade is complete. Now, if you installed it and there are some leaks or some seepage, put a catch pan down, let the car cool off, and then fix the issue. This mod is not new, but it's not super popular even though it is sold out to a lot of places. I did read and watch several sources to get as much info as I wanted before doing this. And I've put links in the description of other YouTubers who performed this mod and offer some more info on the cooling system in general. So don't forget to like and subscribe, good luck on your projects, and as always, Stay tuned and thanks for watching.